And it's very nice to welcome on Dennis Kucinich, longtime congressman from Cleveland, running in Toledo for the first time. Welcome to you. Thank you for coming on. Good to be here with you. Thank you. All right. You have a contentious battle now, two competitors, one of whom served uh, even longer than you in Congress, Marcy Kaptur. What is it about your candidacy that should convince Toledoans and those in Northwest Ohio to vote for you for the first time? Well, first of all, I want the people of Toledo to understand that I would be honored to represent them. And the same kind of devotion that I provide to my constituency right now, where we had over 10,000 requests for service a year, very service intensive. When people need help, we're there. When organizations need help, we're there. When people need to rally to save a steel mill or to save another factory or to have improved transportation or to address the plight of the homeless, I'm there. People need help to be able to sustain police efforts to fight back with crime. I'm there. So the same concerns that people have in Toledo, people have in Cleveland. And because of the years of service I've given in the Cleveland area as a city councilman, clerk of courts, mayor of Cleveland, state senator, and now U.S. congressman, I'm fully prepared for this job in Toledo, but I want the people of Toledo to know that I want to represent them, that I look forward to representing them, and that I will be their voice on Capitol Hill uh, just as I'm the voice for Cleveland. The constituent services aside, when the primary was just coming into focus, there was speculation. Uh, one about there was a lot of controversy about the redistricting and all that, and then there was speculation that you might move. Uh, and it was said in passing to me, and I can't recall the source, and it, it's not necessarily the most legitimate source in the world. But well, it was, then it's always important to know the source. Well, this was just a com an offhand comment of somebody uh, made in passing that the reputation was, at least here, that you are a man that has a strong ideology, and Marcy Kaptur had the reputation on the Hill of being the doer and the pragmatist and getting things done. How do you fight uh, that sort of perception from voters just starting to get to know you here? Well, uh, first of all, in Cleveland, this week they're opening up a veterans hospital, a clinic that I was instrumental in getting in Parma, Ohio. Last year I was able to get a social security center uh, put cl uh, close to my district office in our district, and it's a new building. I have a new bridge in Berea, Ohio, that I was instrumental in getting as part of an $82 million deal to keep rail traffic out of heavily congested uh, neighborhoods. This past uh, 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 month, we celebrated 10 years of saving 1,700 jobs in a steel mill. They're having another 150 people. I mean, I get things done. I'm an, I'm an activist, and I take that activism into addressing the plight of people who want jobs, health care, education, who want their retirement security, and who want peace. So if people in Toledo want someone who is, who is a doer, as well as someone who has a vision of the kind of world we can have, where there should be jobs for all, where there should be health care for all, where there should be education for all, retirement security for all, peace, well, that's who I am. All right. I'm glad you bring up jobs here. That's probably the most important on many people's minds right now is job creation. As the representative of the 9th Congressional District, what role would you play in Congress, and what can Congress really do at this point to facilitate job creation? Well, uh, the first thing we need to do is to move forward with broad plans in a way that Franklin Roosevelt had generations ago. We need a new WPA, but the question is how do you pay for it? My proposal, the National Employment Emergency Defense Act, would use the power of the government to be able to invest in our own country to build bridges, water systems, sewer systems, to rebuild our infrastructure, provide seven million jobs. We need, we need a jobs program that's very broad based, that can enable communities like Toledo, where people are, have been struggling for years unemployed, to get back into the, into the job market, but not with the private sector, because the private sector isn't providing jobs as they should. They're still laying people off. The public sector has a moral responsibility to get people back to work when you have unemployment at the levels that we have right now. So my plan, the National em Employment Emergency Defense Act, would get America back to work, and this is something that would help Cleveland, it would help Lorraine, Sandusky, Toledo, uh, where the uh, employment needs are very, are very real. As you alluded to at the beginning of your response there, the question of payment. How do you pay for something like that, a public works 
project without uh, increasing or further burdening the national debt. Well, my plan is to be able to create the jobs debt free. Let me give an example. Everyone is familiar with the Federal Reserve, how they create money out of nothing through a process called uh, quantitative easing. And they give the money to banks. And that money that they create is actually under the auspices or power of the federal government, under the Constitution, Article 1, Section 8. But Congress and our government has the ability to do that. We should be creating the money and do uh, debt free and creating these jobs with it, instead of having to borrow money from China, Japan, South Korea to be able to uh, 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 pay our own bills here or to be able to pay for wars. We need to be able to focus on jobs here and job creation. We can do that. We have the power. We can do it debt free. So, um, and those who worry about uh, overheating an economy, that's when you can use taxation to, to uh, cool off an overheating economy. But, but we have the power to do this. And the fact that we don't, and the fact that communities like Toledo are struggling, the fact that you have uh, so many neighborhoods that are, that are at risk is a failure of national leadership to be able to take us in a direction of addressing our needs here at home for jobs, for health care, for education, for retirement security. There's a newcomer in this race, Graham Vesey. He ha made it a popular line of his campaign to criticize the long longevity you've had in Washington, the longevity Marcy Captors had in Washington. These are beliefs that you've had and issues that you've pushed for upwards 15, 16 years. Um, what would be different this time and how would you convince your colleagues in Congress to pursue these policy ideas that you've put forth rather than bringing in a fresh voice as one of your competitors? Well, would well I, I would, you know, with all due respect to uh, Mr. Vesey, I mean, he doesn't have any clue about what I've been doing. He doesn't live in my district. And I have to say that what I've been doing in Congress is to be a representative of working people, to be a, a voice, a spokesperson, and uh, an architect for those who don't have jobs, to create momentum for jobs programs. I'm the co-author of a bill, H.R. 676, with John Conyers that would create universal, single-payer, not-for-profit health care that would cover everyone. I'm also a very strong defender of Social Security. Uh, there are some who believe, well, you know, Social Security doesn't have enough money. It does have enough money to meet all of its needs through 2034. We should not be telling seniors they have to accept reduced uh, uh, retirement benefits while our government goes out and prosecutes war. What I've done in Congress that's made a difference, maybe above most other members of Congress, is that I've been the person who's pointed out how wrong it is for us to go to war, how wrong it is for us to go to war based on lies, that war in Iraq was based on lies. It is absolutely immoral that we have all these people in this country without any jobs, with, with, with schools that are falling apart, with situations where people don't have the health care they need or the retirement security isn't there, and we will spend over $5 trillion in Iraq. And unfortunately, my friend, and she is my friend from Toledo, uh, Ms. Captor, voted for all that. I didn't vote for any of it. And I want to point out why not. Because it's immoral to prosecute a war based on lies, and it's immoral to spend that kind of money when you have needs here at home. We're going to run around the world telling everyone what they ought to be doing, and we can't even take care of our own problems here at home. Look, let me tell you something about me. I will, I will chart a course that where others would fear to tread. And the course that I've charted is one that says, stop these wars, stop wasting the money, stop wasting the lives, start taking care of things here at home. That's the big difference between me, not just in the people in this race, but between myself and many other members of Congress. Going forward, is there, I mean, that's a very high profile example of the differences between you and Ms. Kaptur. What else can you bring to the 9th District that she specifically cannot? Because being from the same party, there's going to be overlapping uh, ideology in some areas. There are going to be overlapping plans. Sell it. I mean, what, what's, what's your pitch here? What can you do that she can't? Well, I want the people of Toledo to know that, first of all, my approach is very service intensive to all areas. You know, I'm someone who has represented uh, a, a multicultural constituency all my life. And so for those Latinos who feel left out because uh, their congresswoman voted against the DREAM Act, I'm the person who not only supported that, but can go forward and talk about inclusiveness, where we reconnect with our American dream of unity for those who are African Americans and who feel that the crime that's, over, that's overwhelming many parts of their community, that they don't have anybody really to connect with. As a former mayor of the city of Cleveland, I, I helped to spark a very close connection 
police community relations. They'll build up the police department at the same time, improve relationships in, in the African American community so you have a closer eye on where the uh, crime is and do everything you can to come up with an organized effort to, to, to deal with it. Because there are many people who are just you know, locked up in their homes afraid of what's going on on the outside. We have, to, we have to deal with that. So if you're talking about housing, I have been a key person in the United States Congress in working on foreclosure prevention. I worked very closely with the Treasury Department to be able to come up with formulas to make sure there was more money in neighborhood stabilization. I had $422 million I was able to uh, lead the way to bring into Ohio for foreclosure prevention. We have to do everything we can to keep people in their homes. We still have people struggling to stay in their homes. These are the kinds of things I work on. I want the people of Toledo to know that I'll, I'll be proud to be their voice, to be their advocate, to stand up and speak out for them, and to get things done, which is what I do. Last question here, I want to touch on energy policy. Davis Bessie's uh, complications are well documented. I've noticed that at a few recent hearings, both you and Ms. Kaptur have been there, at least in one uh, recent hearing in the last couple of months you were there. Uh, wh what is your current stance on Davis Bessie, whether it should be allowed to continue, and the future of nuclear energy, and the energy policy in general in the country? First of all, with respect to Davis Bessie, fix it or shut it down. There are cracks in their shield building right now, which First Energy has minimized to the media. They misrepresented the nature of them. We're expecting a report any day as to what the origin of the cracks are. My guess is that when you're talking about concrete, which does deteriorate after a period of time, uh, this is part and parcel of what happens when you have an older building. Mm -hmm. And so they try to minimize those things. We have to realize that nuclear safety is no small matter. After Fukushima, nuclear safety ought to be at the top of everyone's list if they're within 100 miles of a nuclear power plant. And so I have been active on this issue from the time I was mayor of Cleveland. This was many years ago. Yeah. I carried this issue into the United States Congress, this issue of nuclear safety. I raised the issue when uh, First Energy concealed from inspectors a crack, uh, a hole in the head of its reactor that if it had been breached, one sixteenth of an inch more, you would have had a uh, release of radioactivity into the region. See, this is no small matter, and so I say you've got to pay attention to nuclear safety. They have to fix that building, or they have to close the plant down. But let's go further on nuclear power. Listen, I don't have it within my power to just shut down nuclear power plants. Right. Only the NRC can do that. But I have the ability to watch nuclear safety, but beyond that, Nuclear power has turned out to be too expensive. We were told when nuclear power was first created that it would be power too cheap to meter. Those were the exact words. Instead, the cost of building these plants has been so high that the cost of electricity has been driven up to the point of where we've lost manufacturing jobs in northern Ohio because of that. So we need to make a transition to power that is less expensive that can be more useful for manufacturing. Now there is an effort, I know in Toledo here, you have uh, uh, the beginning of what they call uh, uh, the solar city. Mm -hmm. You have uh, uh, many different solar uh, enterprises. Well, that's the beginning, but it's not going to take us uh, immediately where we need to go. That's for the long term. Wind energy is for the long term. But we have to start planning a transition away from. We can't pretend that we can continue to uh, uh, store nuclear waste in places that are environmentally sensitive. Very dangerous. We have to stop producing it. But it's about transitioning out. It's not about shutting down uh, the nuclear industry. We have to start transitioning away from it. Are and you referring to natural gas? Uh, anything more specific? Because, you know, typically as alternatives you hear about wind, you hear about uh, solar, and then you hear about natural gas. Is well, my, my plan would be to go to microtechnologies. Because what we're talking about here are centralized energy production plants in order to reach a distributed population. There's another way to do it. And the other way to do it is to develop wind and solar microtechnologies. My plan, through what I call a Works Green Administration, would be to take the, uh, the creative genius at the National Aeronautics and Space Administration and partner with the private sector. The, the NASA would uh, take the concept, they do the design and the engineering or the R&D on wind and solar microtechnologies, and then with the private sector entrepreneurs, they would help to distribute millions of wind and solar to, to, to manufacture, um, uh, distribute, um, 
install and maintain millions of wind and solar microtechnologies, which would drive down the cost of electricity for homeowners and would help to reduce our carbon footprint. I mean, it's the kind of thing that is possible, but see, we have a centralized energy uh, paradigm here, which then means that we become so dependent on these plants that if there's any kind of a slowdown in their production, it has the potential of affecting the national grid. But frankly, people should be able to have their own energy production units on their homes. It shouldn't cost that much. The United States could take a whole new direction. I mean, people have, over, the, over a period of time, they had phones in their homes that, that were hardwired. We can have energy uh, efficient appliances, literally, that would help to power homes and that would help to collect the power of the sun, harness the power of the wind, and so that would be my plan, to get away from these centralized units, in the case of nuclear power, which have the potential to be devastating to the environment. In the case of oil uh, 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 that's used for home fueling, uh, that creates a problem uh, for the environment. Coal creates a problem for the environment. We have to be stewards of our planet, not just exploiters uh, of it. And so my plan would be to take us in a direction uh, that is sustainable uh, and if we don't start now, when shall we start? And so I'm looking at how do, you, how do you set the stage for the transition? You do it by investing in technology. We have the ability right now to do that because we have the National Aeronautics Space Administration. Any closing thoughts before we let you go? I want the people of, of this community to know that my uh, hope is to be their uh, congressman who will, uh, who will be there on the things that they're concerned about for their families, on the concerns that they may have uh, as consumers, if they have a Social Security, a Medicare, uh, a veterans problem, my office can help with that. But beyond that, to be there to help focus in on the needs of Toledo, to rebuild the center city, to make sure that we, we have a strong port in Toledo, to do everything we can to create jobs programs that can give our young people an opportunity to see some hope, to, uh, uh, to make sure that uh, that we use Toledo as a place where you focus on the needs of this community but show how it's so similar to communities across the country who are being ignored. I mean, and, and how do we do that? We have to move away from a country which is so dedicated to being armed to the teeth internationally and start to bring our troops home and focus on our needs here at home. We will spend five trillion dollars for the war in Iraq, a war based on lies. If we had taken that money and invested in American cities, we wouldn't have poverty in American cities today. If we had put people back to work, if we had rebuilt our infrastructure. So my approach is to reconnect with that dream of a shining city on a hill, to believe that we have the resources to restore our country, but only if we change our priorities and only if we use innovative mechanisms which reclaim our power to be able to fund the rebuilding of our country debt free. So, America has not, uh, does not have its best uh, days behind us, nor does Toledo. But only if we have the kind of leadership that matches work to vision are we able to create the cities that we want. All right. Dennis Kucinich, candidate for the 9th Congressional District in Ohio. Thanks for so much for being with us. Good Thank to you. see you. Thank you. Really appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you.